Hey, what's going on guys, Iptesh here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, in the world of smartphone SOCs, there are two major vendors that dominate. Number one is Qualcomm with their Snapdragon products. And number two is MediaTek with the Dimensity products. Yeah, I know there is Apple as well, the major, major vendor, but I'm sticking to Android at the moment, okay? Now, between Qualcomm and MediaTek, which one is the better option? Now, obviously, you know, it comes down to the tier of products. Like, obviously, you cannot compare a um, very mid-range Qualcomm chipset with a flagship MediaTek or vice versa, right? I'm talking about which is better when you are at the same, you know, performance tier, you know, same product tier, basically, I would say. Uh, which one is better? Most mainstream YouTube channels would just, you know, run some benchmarks and just conclude that, hey, uh, MediaTek is just on par with Snapdragon. It doesn't really matter whether you have a Snapdragon SoC or a MediaTek SoC. It doesn't really matter, right? But if you've been following this channel, then you would know that I tend to have a different opinion, okay? Because I am like, you know, not in the mainstream YouTube segment where I show just mainstream stuff, like downloading apps from the Play Store, running them, running some, uh, you know, basic benchmarks. Uh, you know, I tend to do stuff and show stuff on the channel that are a bit more enthusiast grade. And this is where there are some major differences between Qualcomm smartphones and uh, MediaTek smartphones. So in this video, that is what exactly I'm gonna say, why I consider Qualcomm as still the superior choice and why I personally still choose to use a Snapdragon SoC smartphone over a MediaTek one. But before all that, please make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. With that said, let's start the video. Now, there are three major advantages that Qualcomm powered smartphones tend to have over the MediaTek ones. Okay, number one is custom ROM support. Now, what is a custom ROM? Every manufacturer typically, you know, takes the Android AOSP build. They basically, you know, customize it, add their own features and give a brand name and, you know, they tailor the experience for each of the, each of the brands. You know, they have their own identity, but underlying it, what it runs is basically Android. So the AOSP build of Android is then again further customized and you can install those customized builds onto your smartphone, which is you know, running your specific vendor you know, skin. You can replace that and utilize those custom ROMs. And those custom ROMs, you know, they come with their own advantages. They may be debloated, they may have certain security-based features, they may have some advanced kernel controls, you know, to change clock speeds and stuff like that under volting. So each of those custom ROMs have their own advantages. But what I mean to say is that, yes, you can still get newer and newer Android versions in the form of custom ROMs with their own features. So typically you will find Qualcomm powered smartphones to have a better custom ROM support compared to MediaTek ones. Now I know the usefulness of custom ROMs is dwindling by the day. You know, uh, there are a lot of uh, limitations being introduced with, you know, Android like play integrity stuff, uh, which, you know, prevent you from using UPI apps and payment apps. If you use, if you unlock the bootloader and stuff and bootloader unlocking itself is becoming more and more rare. So I know the utility of custom ROMs and the importance of custom ROMs is decreasing by the day, but still it is a genuine fact that typically a Qualcomm smartphone will tend to have better custom ROM support compared to a MediaTek one. Number two important factor is Google camera mod support. Okay. Now Google camera mod is probably a more important factor to me. Now, what is Google camera mod? Let me give you a brief introduction. Okay. So if you remember uh, Google Pixel, when Google Pixel came out, they revolutionized the smartphone world with the, by showing the importance of, uh, you know, machine learning for capturing photos. Like when Google Pixel came out, like Google Pixel 1 and the 2XL, particularly the Google Pixel 2, basically, uh, they were far ahead of any smartphones when it came to, you know, photography because of the level of computational photography that Google implemented with Google Pixel and the Pixel 2 XL, the Pixel 2, uh, it was revolutionary. Like HDR was taken to the next level. Like Google camera, like the, you know, the Google Pixel smartphones had amazing, you know, HDR, like dynamic range was insane because of the, you know, all the computational photography. Google really introduced what the importance of computational photography was. Yes, there was computational photography for smartphones since many, many years, but Google just took it to the next level. So what happened was later on, the Google Pixel camera application was, you know, ported. The project was started to port the Google camera application for other smartphones, primarily Qualcomm smartphones, okay? So the Google camera applications was application was imported 
and modification was done and was distributed and that became the Google camera mod. Okay. Uh, basically Google camera mod made your basic smartphone, you know, the cheap smartphone into a photography powerhouse. Like this is my Asus Zenfone Max Pro M1. It is really old and it's still working. Okay. I remember buying this phone in 2018, I believe. And the, and day one, I unlocked its bootloader and enabled camera to API and I installed Google camera mod. It was like day one of purchase. Ever since that day, when I installed the Google camera mod application, it is still working today. And I use my, I use this phone throughout my college life. And, uh, I have taken some amazing, you know, uh, photos with this, uh, Google camera mod. Like the photos I got with Google camera mod on this phone is just amazing. Like even today I took a couple of photos yesterday just to show you on screen. The quality difference is just massive. It is massive. Like, uh, it just shows how much competition photography Google really does in the, like, you know, behind the scenes to just amp up the quality of the photos. So Google camera mod is a really important factor uh, to me. And some of you may say that, Hey, you know, a Google camera mod doesn't really matter these days, uh, because phones have, you know, improved their competition photography a lot. Like most vendors have figured out competition photography and most phones these days have really good, uh, you know, automatic processing and stuff like that. But you know what, uh, let me show you. So for example, this is my galaxy S 20 5 G. I still use Google camera mod on this phone and the images from the Google camera mod on this phone are simply better than the stock camera. Especially I, I made a whole video on this. I made a couple of Google camera mod videos on the S 20 5 G and the quality that Google camera mod brings to this phone, like especially with the, uh, telephoto lens, it is huge. Like for example, the, it also adds a couple of new features. For example, the S 20 5 G telephoto lens, you know, you cannot shoot portrait mode photos with that, but using the, uh, Google camera mod, you can, you can take three X portrait mode shots with the, uh, three X zoom with this phone. And the quality is just amazing. Okay. Uh, the S 20 5 G also has a pretty poor, uh, you know, selfie camera, but with Google camera mod, the quality is on another level. Like it is so, so, so much better. So yeah, Google camera mod still makes a huge difference, you know, and let me show you even more, you know, this is my, um, uh, Xiaomi 15, right? This is my Xiaomi 15 and I even installed Google camera mod on this. I'll make a video on it. Like, like I'm still trying to figure out the perfect settings for this. You know, some people may say, why are you installing Google camera mod on a 60,000 rupees phone? You know, it's absurd. The stock camera is already very good. And I agree the Xiaomi 15 stock camera app is really, really good, but I always believe in having just more features. I always believe in having more options. This is why, you know, Google camera mod is one of the you know key advantages that I have that I feel that Qualcomm powered smartphones have. Typically, if you have a cheaper smartphone and you it's powered with a Snapdragon processor, you typically it is possible that you will find a Google camera mod for that. And you are going to see an increase in the image quality. And number three, and that is one of the most important ones that I have is emulation performance. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. Android games suck. Like mobile games, freemium games, they suck. Yes, I know a lot of you probably just pay, play games like uh, BGMI, PUBG, uh, Call of Duty Warzone, Call of Duty Mobile, stuff like that. You know, online multiplayer games. But, you know, as someone who is, you know, in heavy IT work as a working professional, we already deal with a lot of toxicity at the office. So... <laughs> no, there is no, not enough energy left to deal with toxicity in online lobbies, to be honest. So yeah, Android games otherwise just suck. You know, they are built for, you know, monetization purposes. They're just not good. There is not enough good quality single player games on Android. And that is where emulation comes in handy. Emulation is just great. And emulation is great on Qualcomm SOCs, particularly if you are into high end emulation, like switch emulation, or the latest, you know, thing in the block, which is uh, Windows X8664 emulation, like Windows games, AAA PC games, like GTA 5, you know, those kinds of games, if you want to run on your Android smartphone, they are, they run surprisingly well. It is amazing. Like, obviously that these smartphone SOCs are super powerful and they can take all the overhead of emulation and they can still brute force through these games and run them on your phones. And that is a very important, uh, you know, feature to me personally. 
uh, like Qualcomm Snapdragon processors are superb for emulation. Like if you want to do a switch emulation, like the harder ones, what I want to say is that the harder ones, the switch emulation, Windows X86 emulation, like like these kinds of heavy emulation depends largely on, you know, uh, specific, you know, specialized drivers like Turnip drivers for Qualcomm SOCs. Uh, and they really improve the performance and the compatibility of you know emulations like certain like high demanding complicated games so and in this department you know mediatek just lags behind by a lot okay so uh i have shown you some of the things you can check my mi patch 7 review you can check my galaxy tab s9 you can check it on my xiaomi 15 i made a gta 5 emulation review on xiaomi 15 uh it is a pretty critical feature that you know Qualcomm SOCs excel at okay you might not care but this is something that you must know I have seen people buy you know Mediatek chipsets and they go for emulation and stuff to look for Gcam mod and they just you know get nothing because they're just simply not supported okay or maybe it's just glitchy it doesn't work and I've seen them you know be disappointed these kinds of things you will not hear from mainstream you know youtubers they won't they will not talk about it like they this is, they just don't talk about these kind of things. You know, these you will find in, you know, the enthusiast communities when you, you know, search yourself. Okay. That is why I wanted to let you guys know. I also wanted to let you guys know why MediaTek is behind, you know, in this department. It's because MediaTek does not share their source code. Okay. And MediaTek violates their GPL license. Uh, and I personally feel that MediaTek is just losing in the long run. Like enthusiasts like me will always prefer Qualcomm Snapdragon SOCs, you know, for these advantages. Simple as that. Okay, it's not like Qualcomm is just sitting on the laurels and just not innovating. Qualcomm is both innovating and they're also having a key advantages in these areas. But on the other hand, MediaTek still refuses to share source code. As a result, developing for MediaTek and fixing bugs and stuff for emulation and stuff, it is much more hard and it's just rare. So MediaTek continues to lag behind and I feel it is doing harm to MediaTek in the long run. So it depends on MediaTek whether the, what they want to do. But in my opinion, as an enthusiast, I continue to choose Qualcomm Snapdragon SOCs until MediaTek catches up. All right, guys, that's all I want to talk about in this video. Do let me know what you thought about this. Do you use a Qualcomm Snapdragon smartphone or a MediaTek smartphone? What do you prefer? Uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like button, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.